Today I am working on a 2006 CTS um, 2.8. This will be the similar to the 3.6. Um, I'm going to say it will be the same from... 2003 is a little bit funky, worst year ever made for the CTS. Uh, I would say 2004 to 2007 will be the same setup. Um, from 2008 and up. Uh, they're a little bit more easier to work on. So this will kind of apply to that too. So up to 2014. Um, so I have a code for P0300, 302, 303, 304, 305, and 306. So I got five cylinders misfiring, um, which is kind of weird. So it would make you suspect, hey, what's, the, what's going on? Um, um, usually something could be electrical at that point. But we're going to go ahead and check up the... Um, the misfire data um, on the scanner. Now, if you don't have a really advanced scanner, um, no biggie, you can buy a cheap scanner that, as long as you can get a live misfire data, probably the most you can probably maybe spend is like close to like a hundred bucks, and that should be a decent one for you, as long as you can get like a misfire data. And obviously, I mean, the scanner will be coming in hand, because obviously later in the future, if you do have some codes, then that'll be perfect. Um, but yeah, if you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions regarding the misfire. Um, I already have a spark plug replacement. This is going to be a more of like a diagnostic. So uh, that was like one of the very first videos that I did. So this car was that. Um, that was about like a year ago. Um, but yeah, hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and start this video right after the intro. All right, so again, 2006 Cadillac CTS. Um, we're gonna go ahead and go to the scanner, obviously. All right, so we're gonna go to um, engine, and then codes menu. We're gonna go to display codes, and then for other scanners, you might want to get um, display current codes um, or history. See if you see any history codes. All right, so here are our codes. The only one that's not misfiring is number one. So that will be like a 301. Um, but so basically we got 302, 303, 304, 305, and 306. Um, road rough, or rough road sensor, sensor circuit. Um, don't worry about that. Sometimes that actually can cause a, a misfire, but I don't think that's the case right now in, this, in my opinion. Uh, we have the engine coolant temperature sensor, so we're not going to worry about that. Oh, uh, well, that actually can make a misfire. That can make the car run rough. Um, matter of fact, let's check this out. So let's see the... We're going to go back to um, data display. We'll look at engine data. Engine coolant temperature sensor. So, all right. So, 78 degrees. That's where we're at. Um, I don't see anything out of the ordinary. Now, let's say if you're in regular temperature, not snowed, whatever. It's not out freezing. And if you start seeing, like, negative, a negative degree, um, then obviously you have an issue with that and that you should replace that coolant temperature sensor. Um, mass airflow sensor looks fine. The borrow looks fine. Um... Power and rich, evap, perch, fuel tank pressure. So I'm just kind of looking at all these, making sure um, everything is fine. Look 
get all these. Uh, servo sensor voltage, yeah, that's fine. Evap venting. Uh, fuel pump. Alright, cool. So we're going to go to misfire data. And then basically we're going to kind of see what misfires um, in this. Again, if you don't have this, what you can do is clear the codes. Write down your codes first and, on a piece of paper and then clear the codes and then see which one pops up the first and then address that cylinder. Uh, if they all pop up at the same time when you clear the code, then you have an electrical issue. So, I mean, this one has a connector. Well, it'll connect all the... Um, well, that would be for the injectors. Um, but each ignition coil is separate. So, we'll go ahead and check it out. So, we're going to go ahead and start it. And basically, what we're going to be looking for is misfire 1, 2, 3, um, 6, 5, um, and 3. We're, here's our history. So, basically, it's kind of telling me my whole... Um, I think it's the passenger side... If I remember correctly, I would have to double check. Uh, yeah, I think it's the, or the driver's side, I'm sorry. It's the driver's side. That's going to be two, four, and six. Um, I already placed one of the ignition coils on number six. I actually had to replace it again because of rat piss. Um, so we're going to go ahead and check this. Uh, if it's the same, I'm pretty, I could suspect that it could be an intake gasket that could be causing it to um, run poorly. Because it's kind of rare for all three to go out at the same time. Unless of a wrap bit the wire. So, alright. So, let's go ahead and start this up. So, we're going to pay attention to see which one's misfiring. Um, as of right now, none is misfiring. So, but it would be intermittently. So, let's put it in, in D. Still nothing's misfiring. Sorry for moving around so much. Alright, so cylinder number two. That was me backing off. Um, I'm here in the timing chain so what we're gonna go ahead and do we're gonna check our oil um, you're actually gonna have a cover right here basically if you want to pop this guy off um, so you can pop it off we'll take off this guy right here and then the cover the cover will just lift up so grab one hand right here on that side and then with the other hand right there um, on the other side. So let's go ahead and check our oil. All right, so the first time since we had the car running, we're gonna go ahead and kind of look at the oil. Seems pretty dirty. It's pretty black. Um, let's check. So again, we're, we're not even marking. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and add oil first. We're gonna go ahead and add 5W30, um, full synthetic obviously, because that's what it calls for. Uh, customer stated he replaced the oil about a month ago. Um, I don't know how many miles you put on that, but we're gonna go ahead and do that first and then go from there. All right, so we're back in the car. Um, I added about four and a half quarts of oil, which is, a crazy amount. I think this car only takes about like five points something. I think it's like around like 5.2, 5.4. Um, yeah, so when I was kind of giving it gas, I kind of heard a little bit slight knocking, but no oil pressure light was on. Um, so which is pretty crazy, but 
Let's check it out. Let's see if we can see any other symptoms. Um, as of right now, um, it's actually running good. So I think they'll probably the issue was just low on oil. I recommend an oil change. Um, so we're gonna put the car in the on position. I'm gonna clear the coats. Let's see if anything pops up. We'll go ahead and start this. And I noticed the starting kind of sounds better too. So let's check out any codes, see if there's any hard codes. Um, so no hard codes. Um, I'm gonna go take this on for a test drive and see what's going on. Um, actually, yeah, so I'm gonna see what's up and then I'll, I'll be right back. I'll keep you posted. They're adding the oil, um, about five quarts, basically a, a, a oil change um, minus the filter. Uh, the car ran great, took it for a test drive. The first, when I was kind of revving it up in the video, um, did kind of misfire in a little bit, but I'm pretty sure because of the, the cam phasers were probably adjusting or getting oil to the to the motor at that time. Um, but after that, took it for a road uh, test drive and gunned it a little bit and ran great, um, no issues. Um, so let's say if that wasn't your issue, um, what you can do is, um, for the first thing, what I would basically do, is that for your ignition coils so right here this will be cylinder six uh, there's four and two so two four six and then the other one is one three seven um, or I'm sorry one three five sorry about that one three five and um, you would um, switch the coils around so let's say we had a misfire in cylinder number six and we moved the coil to cylinder number four and that coil followed the problem. Like now, let's say your misfire was in cylinder six and it moved over to cylinder number four. Now that will be your issue. So these two are the most easiest ones. Now, obviously if you're right here at, the, at this coil under the intake, now you gotta take off the whole intake. Um, and then you would obviously, you know, follow your procedure. Now, if you wanted to go ahead and replace that then by all means replace it if you don't want to put it all back together now if that was good next i would go into the spark plug switch over the spark plug over and see if that misfire follows the next cylinder now if that doesn't work your next step would be the injector so if your injector you're going to move it over to one cylinder or the other don't try to replace the parts um unless if you didn't want to go in and out of it then by all means go ahead and replace it but Obviously, you know, for the customer, you got to try to make sure you do the job done right and you're not playing a guessing game. So I'm not going to be over here randomly guessing and stuff. So you would move the injector over. It's like I said, it's a little pain in the butt of work to be doing all that stuff. But again, it's, it's part of the automotive industry. Not, 
not everything is going to be easy. So move the injector over, and if the, if the problem followed it, then you would go ahead and replace that injector. Um, and then replace everything. I do have a video on how to do the ignition coils. Um, you can go ahead and check that out and follow that. Now, like I said, if you had kind of like a little misfire issue like how I did, this wire sometimes will come loose right here. This actually controls all the injectors. So um, check for this wire to see right there if it's actually damaged or anything. And if, you, if it's not damaged, it's good. So um, yeah, I think that should be good for that. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty cakewalk. All right, again, so if this video helped you out, give it a thumbs up, comment down below if you have any questions, and hit that subscribe button for more upcoming videos in the future, and thanks for watching.